Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for joining today for the free webinar for the topic for how a value proposition can influence buying decision. And today's topic will be covered by Mr. Iskandar. Uh, Mr. Iskandar is our certified HRDF trainer. Uh, now I pass to you, Mr. Iskandar. Right. Hi, Assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. So how are you? I hope that everyone is uh, fine. Okay. Uh, today is Wednesday. Okay. So those of you who are in... Uh, in your workplace okay i hope that you get uh you, you're gonna have a good day yeah so today right uh i'll be sharing on how a value proposition can influence the buying decision right and before that i would like to thank uh, excel academy for uh having this uh, free webinar session okay uh it is good that um you know, we have this kind of session uh, to share with uh, those who come in, those who are in this Zoom meeting, those who are uh, watching it uh, through Facebook uh, page, yeah, right? So basically, right, when it comes to buying decision, sometimes you would just like, you know, we will, we will ask ourselves, that there's always a question that lingers around all of the businesses and also the uh, entrepreneurs, yeah? Right, um, before that, can you hear my voice clearly or is it stuck? Or perhaps anyone can give me a feedback. Yeah. Is it, is my voice clear? Right, Mr. Chu, uh, Liana, can you hear my voice clearly? It's not stuck, yeah? Okay, cool. Right. So that's the question that always lingers around entrepreneurs or businesses. Okay, or, or if, if you are in sales department, you also have that question. How, how can I sell my product? How can I get this product or services moving even better, even faster, right? Sometimes we thought like, you know, maybe my effort is not good enough. Maybe my marketing is not good enough. But that is not the case, yeah? Sometimes it's not only about your marketing itself, yeah? Yeah? When we talk about marketing, meaning that uh, the marketing efforts that you have done in Facebook, you tweak the copywriting, you tweak the, um, um, you know, design and everything. You know, designs and copywritings are just means for you to uh, execute the marketing effort, right? So it all comes down to what is our value proposition to our customer. Yep. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will... Um, basically answer that question that lingers around your, um, you know, your mind, yeah? Right, before that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is just a brief summary about myself, okay? I'm a young serial entrepreneur. I have been into multiple industries that involve e-commerce, uh, sorry, uh, F&B, yeah, F&B, automotive. Uh, I have my used car dealer, uh, dealership event management, marketing and advertising and training and consultancy. So basically, I run multiple uh, businesses and uh, I have my core team who is handling, uh, you know, multiple, uh, multiple businesses together with me. And then we divide them into sub, uh, you know, kind of a department, but it's basically other kind of businesses, yeah. Uh, apart from being a certified HRD Cup trainer, I'm a certified Google and certified Microsoft uh, advertiser as well, all right. And these are some of my client list. Okay, I have a lot, but due to the size of the presentation, okay, uh, I have served MDAC, Magic, SME Corp, UTP, Arista, Pekeso, College Mega Tech, CGC, a lot of others, uh, government agencies, and also uh, companies that I have served. Uh, and recently, uh, two of my uh, best mentees in the uh, Magic University Startup Challenge, they won first place and uh, second place in uh, Magic University Startup Challenge, yeah? I don't know, they should be here, uh, I think Satish, yeah? So they won and they, they got back home with 15,000, I think, 10,000 and 8,000, right? Okay, so just before we move into value proposition, uh, last two weeks, I, I have done a free webinar session on a customer persona. And I would just like to recap a little bit about customer persona, why? Because customer persona relates to value proposition. Okay, the question should be, how does it relate? How is it related? Yeah. 
So basically, in order for you to propose the value, you need to understand your customer, what they need, right? So customer persona is to model your best customers uh, for your own business. And through that, you will understand your customers in depth. And when you have segmentized them, let's say, for instance, you have students group, you have um, B40 uh, working adults group, and then you have another T20 working adults group, right? Then you know that for each of these groups or segments, they have different needs. Yeah, they have different needs and, and different values that uh, they are looking for, right? So therefore, customer persona is something that you need to touch on before you move into think on how to propose a value to your customers. Yeah? And uh, this customer persona, people said, it's a fiction that you need to create, but that is not the case. Yeah? So it is actually from your collective data of your customers before, okay? So you collect, collect, collect the data, you'll find an average, you'll find that they, that they have some or, or similarities between themselves in terms of um, uh, their behavior, psychographic and also demographic. You can find a, a little bit of similarities there. And therefore, it's easy for you to um, propose a value since they are similar. Okay, that's why we call it as segmentizing the group. Yeah? Okay, just move on quickly on customer persona. So basically, customer persona is very important. Why? Because it, because it, uh, you can personalize the content. Okay, and it's for your marketing arsenal. You can retain your customer through this. And the most important part is this, offerings improvement. Or in the other hand, we call it as value proposition. Yeah? Meaning that you can improve your value proposition. You can propose a better value because you understand them. Okay? Right. For example, right? If you understand uh, your wife and you understand your husband, yeah? So you can provide a better value for them. Let's say if, if your wife values makeup over cars, for example, right? On her birthday, you can buy her makeups, right? Okay, but let's say your, uh, your wife loves car better than makeup. So even if you give her makeup, it might not satisfy her, right? So that is an example of what I'm trying to um, uh, share with you today. Yeah? All right. Quickly move on. Okay. All right, sorry. Okay, so this is uh, the example of the uh, customer persona punya template okay, that I've done before. So demographics is knowing their background, psychographics is. Okay, so we're going to touch here. Basically, if you can see here, priority, barrier frustration, success indicator, decision factor. This is where we are going to touch. And this is where um, factors to... Um, to actually propose your value comes in. Yeah. Factors to propose value comes in the cut psychographics. Yeah. So when you understand what is the priority of your customer, when you understand what's their barrier and frustrations, okay, you understand what is the indicator of success. Okay. Right. And what is their decision factor, then it's easy for you to propose a value. Okay, since we have a lot of time, okay, trust me, we have a lot of time, yeah? I would like to ask, ladies and gentlemen, okay, uh, I hope that you can answer it inside the chat box, eh? okay? Right, so when you are choosing a phone, right, let me know your utmost decision factor. Let me know your utmost decision factor when you're looking for phone, okay? Some might be looking for the cheapest one. Some might be looking for the highest pack. Okay. So whatever it is, can you put it inside the chat box, please? Anyone? Right. I, I need to know only one. Yeah. Okay. Steven, Mr. Steven said it's functionality. Okay. It's functionality. Okay. That's good. How about the others? Okay. Mr. Adam said, uh, is it Mr. or Miss? Okay. Uh, said it's all about the price. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. How about the others? Come on. We have like 14 people around here in this group, in this uh, Zoom session. Okay, maybe another two, uh, two people. Okay, Khalida, um, memory size, okay? Maybe she's, she's talking about uh, RAM or storage, RAM and storage. Okay, that's fine. 
One more person, please. Anyone? Come on, anyone. One more person. Then that should be fine. We can uh, proceed with the class. Maybe can we have uh, Mr. Magad or Mr. Zul Hanafi or Mr. Shivan Raj? Okay. Right? Or D, perhaps. Friendly user. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So you, you all have your own preference, right? Okay. So imagine that you are Samsung. Okay. How are you going to, uh, you know, innovate the product or, or create a value of the product? Uh, if you if you don't know what is the decision factor of what your customer wants, right? Let's say battery life, okay? So, who values battery life? They will opt to move to what what brand? Okay, give me an example. If you value battery life, what phone will you buy? Okay, what phone will you buy? Come on, guys. <laughs> If you value battery life, what phone will you buy? Xiaomi, Redmi, definitely because their battery is like super, super big, right? Okay. Yeah. If, if you value uh, uh, durability or, or you want to pakai the phone lama, right? Okay. People opt to go with iPhone, correct? Right? That's why iPhone is expensive, but it can withstand. Even if you pakai Samsung, the high-end one, right? Okay, what will happen two years or three years max? Two years, you will start feeling that it's laggy. You will start feeling that, I want to throw this phone. Right? Uh, yes, not the smart, smartphone. Nokia Lama, yes, definitely. Okay, Nokia Lama is way forward lah. Okay, I mean, dia punya battery tahan, durability kuat dia semua kan, okay? Right? So, that is why we need to understand our customer first. Yeah? And now, the question should be, what can we do with the customer persona? Now you have understood your customer. 3310 Brick. Yes, there is a rumor. Okay, I don't know. This is rumor or it's a fairy tale or a storytelling. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, they said that if you throw a 3310 to a dog, the dog dies. Yeah? So, hopefully it's not true. Okay, but I don't know how true it is. Yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what can we do after we understand our customer, after we have plotted the customer persona, what can we do with it? Okay, so we can plot them into a framework called value proposition canvas in which understanding your customer will help you to propose effective values to them meaning the values that they want yeah and this will be the game changer or the reason why they need to choose you okay right simple this is value proposition okay so value proposition okay this one is very important yeah this one is very important okay value proposition is what makes a product or service a market fit right so if you are an entrepreneur you are doing startups you are trying to innovate this and that okay in order for you to determine whether uh, your product is a market fit or not okay or are you trying to force the market into your product fit okay so this is where it, uh, uh, you can see okay you can see whether your product or service is a market fit or not through value proposition are you there to solve the problem are you there to give them gains are you there to solve the jobs that uh, they need to get it done? For example, yeah? Okay. And apart from that, if you're doing just normal businesses, traditional businesses, or if you are playing in the, uh, I would say, uh, not really blue, blue ocean, okay? Meaning that you have some competitors here and there, or you are playing in the red ocean market. So value proposition is giving potential customer reason to buy or reasons to buy yeah okay so when you ask okay someone or anyone okay why should okay the question should be like this yeah the question would be why should i okay why should i buy from 
myself. Okay, rather than we ask, why should you buy from me? Now you ask yourself, put yourself into the shoe of the customer. Why should I buy from myself? Okay, so a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or businesses in Malaysia, they forgot to ask this question to themselves. Okay, so when you forgot to ask this question from uh, to to yourself, you are actually forgetting about what is important. You are forgetting about why am I in the market? Okay, sometimes they never ask from themselves. They they just thought like, oh, okay, tak apalah kita open up je lah the business that should be fine. Right, because because I can do it, because my customer service is good, because my food is delicious. That kind of value is very subjective, and we are not looking that because why? It is subjective and it differs from one to another, and therefore value proposition has to be objective. Okay, it has to be objective. One thing to note that. It is easy for you to plot in. Okay, it is easy for you to plot in value proposition canvas if you innovate a new solution for a niche problem. But if you are competing in a red ocean market, you will find it very challenging. This has been done. Okay, this has been done. Uh, because I've trained over uh one thousand plus um. What are property agents? Ah, okay, from uh, Maxon Realty and also from Viva Homes. Okay, so I totally understand that it's hard for them to plot their value proposition canvas because you can see from one uh property agent to another property agent to another property agent, their values are just the same. So when I ask them, why should I buy from you? Okay, all of them say because my service is good. Okay, uh, I take care of you this. I take care of you that. That is very subjective. We are not looking at that, okay? Right. So now, ladies and gentlemen, okay, I want to ask you a question, okay? If we are talking about burger, right? Okay. All right, all right. No, no, we we don't want to talk about burger, okay? We talk about chicken lah, chicken, okay? We want to talk about chicken. So, in your opinion, McDonald's chicken is better or Texas chicken? Or KFC or Mary Brown, which one is better? Okay, now put it inside the chat box. Okay, when we talk about fried chicken, which one is better? KFC, Texas, um, McDonald's or uh, Mary Brown? Okay, Mr. Steven said it's KFC. She, uh, Mr. Shivan said it's Texas chicken. Kalida said it's KFC. How about anyone who loves for uh, fried chicken from McDonald? Is there anyone? Okay, Mary Brown. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, how about the others? Come on, guys. Are you guys sleeping? <laughs> okay, while you are answering, let me have a sip of water. Yeah. Okay, come on. Two more person. Come on, two more person. KFC, Mary Brown, McDonald's, or Texas Chicken. Come on. Can we have one person from the uh, uh, from Excel Academy? Okay, KFC, KFC. All right. Can we have another one person from Excel Academy answering whether it's KFC, McDonald's, Texas Chicken, or Mary Brown punya chicken yang you suka? Come on. Halal fried chicken. <laughs> Mary Brown. Okay. So you see here, dekat dalam chat box, Okay, uh, some of you say it's KFC. Some of you say it's Texas. Some of you say it's Mary Brown. Yeah, right. And I personally like uh McDonald. Right. So, does that mean I am correct and you guys are, and you guys are wrong? No, right. Because it's subjective. When it comes to taste, it is subjective. Therefore, value proposition. Right. Therefore, value proposition. That involves subjectivity is not that accurate or kind of invalid. Yeah, so it's very hard for us to tell whether that this is our true uh, value proposition. That's why we cannot say something that is objective as 
uh, sorry, something that is subjective as our value proposition. Now, another one thing. yeah, When we talk about burger, burger Ramli, KFC, Burger King or McDonald's or A&W, put it inside chat box. Uh, just wanted to know your preference. Lah, huh? Just wanted to know your preference. Come on, guys. Inside the chat box. Ramli lah, bro. Cantik. We are gang lah, bro. Alright. How about the others? Okay. Ramli. Okay. Nice. We are gang. How about the others? Anyone loves McDonald's or Burger King or A&W? Okay. Ramli tetap the best. Eh? Okay. But still, we also have McDonald's. Right? Why our preference is different? I would say Ramli is the best burger in the world. Right? But some of you might say, no, McDonald's is the best burger in the world. Yeah? So therefore, our value proposition has to be objective. And what do we mean by objective? Something that people can't argue. Right? And how to plot it? How to make sure that our value proposition is objective? We plot them through value proposition canvas. Okay? So if we see on this uh, picture, right? Okay? Let me open up another... Um, File lah, okay, just for your ni lah. Okay, it's bigger, it's better, yeah. Uh, can you see that ni je? Eh? Okay, right. Okay, you see there is two box here, kan? Ada dua box kat sini. We have um the circle one on the right hand side, and we also have the um the square one on the left hand side. So, how are we going to plot this in? Okay, first of all, you need to understand that the circle is actually from your Customer persona. Okay, once you have segmentized them, can okay, right? You ask them on their psychographics, their by uh, decision factor, priority, decision factor, barrier and frustration, and everything. So this is where you plot them in, and then you answer their problems into this. Okay. So this circle is your market. Please listen carefully. Yeah. Okay. This circle. Is your market. Let me jot this down here. This circle is your market. Okay. And this square is actually your product. Okay. Therefore, this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to do a product market fit. Okay. In order to do a product market fit, a product that the market wants, we need to Understand the market first. Okay. And when we understand the market, we can address the market. Yeah. We can serve them. Okay. So without any further ado, let's go and dive into the value proposition canvas. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, right. The first one we are we will be looking at would be where's the eraser? Okay. The first one we will be looking at is the pain. So, often before we start our business or during uh, when we wanted to do, uh, we wanted to develop a new product or develop a new service, okay, we would first understand what our, what is our customer pain, okay? What is the what is the frustrations or the barriers or or anything yang sakit kepala. Okay, the keyword pains is headache. Okay, headache. Something that gives headache. Okay, right? Okay, so what is their pain? We need to ask them that. Okay, so you ask your customer personas, you ask your few customers inside, uh, inside one customer segment. Uh. One customer segment, you have multiple customers, kan? Okay, you go lah and ask five or ten of them. Okay, five, five or ten of them. Okay, ask them what is their pains. Then, they will say, okay, my pain is this. And then my pain is uh, that. Okay. And then my pain is this. So you're going to have like somewhere around five pains. Let's say, for example. Right? So, what are you going to do next? From these five, from these five pains that you have asked your customers, okay, you go and ask your product you go and see your product, whether it can solve any of these five. It doesn't mean that you need to solve all of these five. Okay? Let's say for example, okay? Right? For example, when we are talking about, um, 
you know uh, we are talking about okay you know batu lesung tak batu lesung okay batu lesung this is batu lesung right and i don't know what's the name in in english eh? okay the the one that you use to tumbuk the chili you know tumbuk the bawang everything tu do you know the, do you know batu lesung right i think the malay tahu lah how about the the chinese and the indians tahu tak rasa tahu juga kan can you put it in the chat box yeah yeah okay okay let's say for instance we are doing a comparison between a batu lesung a blender okay a blender okay a blender and a knife yeah and a knife okay okay so this is knife ah huh? okay this is knife okay so we ask the customers what is their pain okay some of them might say it's okay it's actually time okay we, we are talking about nak nak tumbuk the Uh, the the bawang for example tumbuk the bawang or blend the bawang okay so their pain is time some of them they might have okay let's say lah uh, one of them is time okay another one is electricity bill okay right because different customer different problem ah some of them said okay I, my my concern is only time my concern is only electricity okay some of them might say what okay something else okay maybe the the kehalusan of the um, you know halus uh, kehalusan of the tumbukan or the the blending of the the uh, bawang for example okay that's fine they can say whatever they want that is their pain right? right so see your product if your product if let's say your product is batu lesung all right you can settle the problem of electricity right Okay, electricity. Can you solve time? No, you can't solve time. Can you solve about kehalusan? No. So this is where, yes, lightsaber. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so that's why when we see our product, okay, it's okay if we don't address a lot of pains, but at least we are addressing some of them, right? If our customer have five of them, five of the problems, okay? Now, What you can do is that you see how many uh, problems that you can solve. Okay, let's say you have two problem, electricity and also perhaps um um apa ni? Uh, I don't know, maybe cultural look ke ataupun you know, uh, cheap ke okay, cheap ke right, right cheap for example lah, eh? cost lah, cheap cost ke apa semua, eh? right? Depends. If you are selling, um. If you are selling the apa ni nama dia uh, blender on the other hand maybe you are not solving the electricity okay maybe you are not solving about the cost but you are solving about the kehalusan and you are solving about the what okay kehalusan and also the apa uh, user friendly okay user friendly or Actually, it's it's user friendly lah kan. It's easy to apa. You don't have to uh, put a lot of effort, kan. So it depends. So this value proposition canvas you can do in order to compete or to to provide uh, values compared to uh, the alternatives or even the same product but different brands pun boleh. Okay. For this example, we will be taking. Uh, Uh, this uh, alternative ah uh, alternative maksudnya batu lesung the blender and also the knife okay and let's say if their problem is actually time if their problem is actually time okay right if their problem is actually time and you are selling knife right if you are selling you are selling knife knife is cheap and it's time consuming okay But the, the but the kehalusan is not there the electric electricity perhaps ah huh, pun boleh okay right so that's why do you realize that if you go to a uh, kedai tom yam or kedai mamak right you nampak tak dia pergi tumbuk 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 nak buat nasi goreng nampak tak tak kan you nampak apa uh, dia ambil bawang tu dia letak situ dia ketuk 
Dia potong-potong sikit Campak terus Betul tak? Right? Unless you go to Another kind of mamak lah Maybe somewhere in I don't know Maybe outside of Malaysia Kan? Do, do you realise that? Or You tak realise pun I don't care lah How they masak As long as I got my nasi goreng lah Right? Do you realise that In kedai mamak They often Tumbuk only pakai The pisau And then They potong-potong-potong Masukkan dalam uh, The kuali Do you realise that? Guys, where are you? Put it inside the chat box. Yeah, right? So, it is also to compare. Okay? It is an alternative. If you are selling those blender, you can think on the alternative. You need to see the, the batu lesung and also the knife. How are you going to compete with different kind of alternative or, or your substitutes? Yeah? Uh, before you move on to Even before you move on to compare between a blender and a blender, your brand and another brand, okay, you need to see what is the difference or, or the value that you can provide between uh, your product and the substitutes of your product, okay, right? So, so let's say your customer has five pins and you can only solve three of them. That's okay, right? So this is how we plot. We ask the customers what are the pains that they are facing, what is their frustration, what is their barriers, you know. Okay, right? So, they put in all the pains and then you see how many pains uh, that you can relieve using your product. Okay? Right. So, now we settle on the pain. Pain is something that gives them headache. Now, gain. Okay? So, often, we always thought that pain and gain Gain addresses pain. No. Okay. Gain is something that is additional. Okay. Additional or what we call as added value. Yeah. Added value. Right. So value proposition is not added value. But added value is a component inside, a, 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 inside your value proposition. Okay. For example. Okay. For example. Right. Let's say if we are talking another example of um, a car. Okay, a car. So, pains might be uh, those functional jobs yang dia pening kepala lah. Macam, you know, uh, to drive from here to there, safety, blah, 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 you know. But gains would be, oh, I would like, you know, like I, I would appreciate if you can, uh, if you can uh, offer me, you know, if you can offer me together with this BMW, um, perhaps... Tak cenggu, right? Tak cenggu. So my question here, tak cenggu, and maybe they are asking for full tank and umbrella. Okay. So if you are buying a new car, right, or or a second hand car, right, okay, if you don't get the tak cenggu and if you don't get the umbrella and if you don't get the full tank, is it a headache for for you? Right, in my opinion, it's not a headache. Why? Because you are there to buy the car, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you guys agree with me? Okay, do you guys agree with me? Yeah, right. Okay, your pain might be I don't have a car now. I I can't go travel from there to uh from here to there. I can uh my car, the current one, is not safe. Or or you know, I want a better spec uh, because this car cannot do certain things, for example. But when it comes to touching, go umbrella, full tank, lah, uh, warranty, lah, everything. Lah, okay, it falls under gains as usual. Okay, you need to ask your customer what is the added value that you want. Okay, and they are going to tell you 100 plus of added value that they want. And definitely, you are not God and you are a business that focus on profitability. So you need to consider your cost and everything. C, from this 100 plus um, added value that they are asking for, right? Put in how many that you can provide to them. Okay? If you can provide to them is only 20, then put lah 20. If you can provide only 5, then that's fine. Okay? Put lah 5. Okay, let's say, for example, you can give them full tank. Okay, you can give them full tank. So, put lah full tank. 
You cannot give touch and go. You cannot give smart tag. Okay, I put one more smart tag. Eh? Smart tag here. Okay. Pardon me for my to listen because I'm using the uh, mouse. Eh? Okay. You cannot give smart tag. That's fine. Give them touch and go. Okay. Cannot give umbrella and smart tag. That's fine. You can only do two. So, that's fine. That's the only genes that you can give. All right. And then, this you compare with your competitors. Okay. So, that's why. Okay. That's why I said that in, in a red ocean market, such as uh, property agents, right? It's very hard. Why? Why it's hard? Because you are solving the same pain as the other property agent. Now, you are giving the same gain as your, as your, as the other property agents. So what makes you special? Okay. So usually if you can't address to their pains, if you, I mean, if you have solved the same pains with the other brand of the other competitors, that's fine. You can win also in gain creators. Okay. What happens is that you can't even compete with the gain. You can't even give, create more gains for your customers. And so that's why you are losing out to the market. So far, do you understand what I mean? Okay. So far, do you understand what I mean? Or still unclear? Come on, guys. Put inside the chat box. So at least I know that you are here. Right? Okay. Satish is clear. Okay. Yeah. Satish has been... Uh, okay. Congratulations, Satish. Okay. Just one uh, magic university startup challenge. Yeah? Right? Okay. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you wanted to provide a, a service or, 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 or product, right? Okay, make sure if you are solving the same pain, okay, you need to give more gains, more gains, okay, right? Some people, okay, or the old school one, okay, right? We often see like this, huh? okay, let's say uh, we have two options, uh, we have two options. You want to buy a hammer, right? Okay, we go to uh, Kedai A, um, who uh, Mr. Chu is uh, actually selling the hammer for 10 ringgit. Okay. Right. But when you go to Mr. Chu, right. Okay. He, he simply said, okay, in his 10 ringgit, you mau beli, you angkat, you tamu beli, you balik. Right. And then you go to another shop. That's a shop, B shop, huh? who is handled, uh, which is handled by uh, Mr. Ali. Okay. For the same hammer, he is selling for, 20 ringgit or 25 ringgit 20 ringgit eh? we put 20 ringgit but he is so good that uh, at, at customer service he layan you he tells you that oh this hammer can do this okay so how to use a hammer properly and everything okay so comparatively same hammer for 10 ringgit and 20 ringgit which shop are you going to choose although we know that um, you know Kedai A Mr. Chu it's not really rude, lah, but he's not that friendly. But his price are actually cheaper, way cheaper. Or you you opt for Mr. Ali, who is actually double the price and but but uh, good at customer service. Okay. Can you give me some thoughts? Which one would you choose? I would personally choose A. Okay, even though it's not friendly, he's not friendly, but it's cheap. Chiu Chiu. <laughs> yeah, I would I would choose Mr. Chiu. Okay, yes, Mr. Chu is cheap, although he's not friendly, but I will still go for him, right? So that is what I mean by being objective. You know, you know that you are the cheapest, so you give the value, although you, your, your customer service is not good, couple, people will still buy, right? People will still buy, yeah? So that's why when you talk about, oh, we must provide a good quality service or whatsoever, how are you going to quantify the service? You can't quantify the service. Therefore, if you put service inside your gain creators here, you can't. The question is, how are you going to quantify the gain? How are you going to quantify your service? There's no way. Okay. So if any of you trying to put like, okay, uh, I wanted to create a gain. So my gain would be like, you know, uh, provide good customer service or quality customer service or provide good or delicious food. Okay. Forget about it. Forget about it. 
you can't win the market like that. Okay? You can't win the market like that. Right? So now, we have understood that customer always have pain and we are addressing the pains through the pain relievers. Yeah, correct? Okay? So pain is something that giving them headache for that particular um, product or job, right? But apart from that, we have also looked into what the customer wants as an added value. What they want as the added values. So we are going to create something for them. Yeah? Last but not least, we need to ask the customer whether our product is actually solving any of the jobs that needed to be done or not. Okay. So what does it mean by customer job? Customer kerja apa ke? Kerja executive ke? Kerja CEO ke? No. Okay. So one thing that we should know, ladies and gentlemen, is that when customer decides to buy a product or a service, it means that they have, they have a job needed to be done by that particular product. Okay. So before I move on uh, more towards the customer job, let us watch a video together. Okay. Right. Let us watch a video together, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So... This video is actually by uh, the late uh, Professor Clee Christensen uh, from Harvard Business School. All right. So I think it's quite good. It's quite good for us to uh, see this video and understand what does it mean by customer jobs. Okay. All right. So we're going to watch this together, ladies and gentlemen. You can hear the voice, right? To give you an illustration of how we develop this in a deeper way um, McDonald's approached us um, and McDonald's is a very sophisticated marketing company and uh, they have data up the kazoo and uh, they decided they, that they needed to innovate in their milkshake product line so that more people will buy milkshakes and uh, they had data that allowed them to, to draw a quintessential customer out of milkshakes milkshake you can't hear is it can't hear let me check so everyone you can't hear is it very soft okay let's try this Okay, sorry, sorry, I, I was talking, but yeah, now you can hear my voice. Eh? Okay, so according to Professor Clay Christensen uh, from Harvard Business School, okay, McDonald's came to them. Okay, McDonald's came to them and uh, asking them on how they can improve their uh, milkshake uh, product, product line. Okay, so they have done the product line of the milkshake, they have improved it in terms of the uh, taste, in terms of the, um, you know, of the variety. Maksudnya banyak flavor, mix and match, you know. Uh, everything about the product, physicalities, they have tried. So, but then, they were asking themselves, like, why doesn't they, why, why whatever efforts that they have done actually doesn't even improve their um, milkshake? So that is where they have identified that when they see the product, it's not about, okay, I'm selling milkshake. But it's about, why people decided to hire milkshake, right? 
and it is where they compare not against a milkshake to another milkshake. They are not talking about the McDonald's milkshake and comparing to another Burger King milkshake or or, or KFC milkshake, for example. Yeah, uh, it, I think in the uh, in 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 their place, right? Okay, Burger King also has milkshake. McDonald's also has milkshake. So uh, they are not comparing with other brands' milkshake, but they are comparing with why people decided to hire the milkshake. Okay, compared to its its a competitor in the form of donuts, bagels, you know, um, sneakers, and and few other uh, competitors. So when they go outside of the shop, okay, and they have realized one thing. Okay, they said, if I'm not mistaken, they have sat outside of the shop for 18 hours. Okay, so for 18 hours they have sat outside of the shop. Then they 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 ask they they realize one thing that people uh, a lot of people is buying the milkshake early in the morning. Okay, at eight, a lot of people is buying at eight. So they decided to ask one of the customers. They asked like, "Hey, um, can I ask you this question? Why do you uh why do you decide to hire a milkshake?" Okay, and then the person was like, what do you mean by that, right? Okay, I can't understand that, okay, right? Then they rephrase the question. Okay, no, no, no. Let's, let's do it this way. Do you remember the, the exact same day on, on a, another day, okay, that you decided not to hire milkshake and you are in the same situation? What do you hire? So they said that, okay, oh, last time I decided to hire uh, a donut, okay, a donut. But what happened is that it's so greasy, okay, Berminya and you know when you eat you know a lot of the sugar comes down uh, to your shirt and everything yeah and and the other day I've tried bagels as well but as you know they are dry and tasteless and I need to put some jams or or peanut butter on, on them so I had to drive like uh, using my legs okay and if there is a phone call I'm in a crisis it's what they said lah huh? okay then I've tried uh, another one okay banana um, but as you know, banana they will finish in another five minutes, and I know I'll be hungry in uh, I'll be hungry at ten. So I ate this at eight, and I'll be hungry at ten. So it, it requires me two, two uh two different products at, at uh you know dua kali kerja lah. Okay, and last but not least, okay last time I decided to hire sneakers, but you know man I feel guilty, right? Because sneakers you know is chocolate, right? It's it's uh you have a lot of calories inside it, so um. That's why they hire milkshake. And uh, it's because of their long drive. They needed something to accompany them while they are driving. So they have something on the other hand. Right? Okay, they are on the left-hand side driver. So when they drive, they want something on the right-hand side to drink and to hold. So milkshake is something that is viscous. Uh, it satisfies your hunger because it's viscous, kan? Pekat. Lepas tu, lambat nak habis. So it can accompany them lah across the long drive. Okay. So that is the job that has been done by the milkshake. So now we need to ask ourselves, what is the job that our product is solving? And what we mean here is the functional job. Okay. And the emotional job. And also the last one is the social job. Okay. Let's say about BMW, okay. Let's say about BMW, right? Don't want to talk about Mercedes yet, okay? This BMW. So, can I know, ladies and gentlemen, what is the functional job of a BMW? What is the functional job that they are solving? BMW, a BMW. What is the functional job that they, uh, they have uh, solved for the uh, customers? Put it inside the chat box, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Okay, go from point A to B, correct? Okay, what else? Okay. Allow people to reach destination safely. Okay, safety. Okay. Prestige, prestige is not their functional job. We are talking about functional. It's a car. And what is the function of a car? The function of the car that they provide, that BMW provide. Okay, comfortable seat. Okay, all right, comfortable seat. Okay, all right. 
So a lot of things can safety lah, this lah and that. Okay, so that are all the functions. Yeah, okay. Let's say durability, for example. Then we we need to ask what is the emotional job that we solve, right? Emotional job that we solve. So the emotional job we are talking about. What is the feeling of utilizing of of executing the functional job? What is the feeling? Come on, show off wealth. Okay, that is not under emotional. Okay, that is under social. It's under the bottom one. Come on, try. What is emotional? When you are driving a BMW, when you when you are driving, right? What is your feeling? Okay, what is your feeling? We are talking about feeling. Come on, guys. Speed, speeding and uh, cutting other cars. <laughs> okay, I, I mean, what is your feeling when you are driving a BMW, for example? Proud. Okay, that's good. Okay, proud. Okay, and maybe you feel comfortable. Comfort, huh? Right. And then one more. What? Anything else? Perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, maybe you feel um, you know, uh, happy. Yeah, happy. Or anything regarding your feelings, okay? All right? Happy. Or, or maybe you feel safe. Just plot them down. And last but not least is the social. Okay? The social. So this is where we talk about what? Yes. Status. Right? The elevation of status. If you're driving a BMW and your friends are driving Asia, okay? Definitely people will look at you. And 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 uh, they will have the stereotype that okay those yang pakai BMW among this uh, Asia group okay he or she is the richest among the group, right? Okay, uh, so this social is related to human whatever related to human, yeah whatever related to human it can be status it can be um uh fear of missing out okay. All right. Why? Let's say if your friends all uh, are moving from a uh, Honda Civic to BMW, for example, okay, but you are still in the bubble of Honda Civic, okay, you feel what fear of missing out. So you you don't want you you want to be in that circle, for example, social, right? Okay, so that what is what it is, right? And then you see there is a products and services over here. We have plotted down. The functional, emotional, social job that we ask the customer. Okay, what do you expect of a car? BMW, they will ask. Okay, what do you want? Okay, what is the job, the functional job that you want to address? Okay, I want number one, two, and three. Emotional job, I want to feel proud. I want to feel comfort. I want to feel happy and safe. Okay, what about social? I wanted to uh, elevate my social status. I wanted to uh, be out of the fear of missing out. Okay. So now, can can your product or your services solve the functional job? Let's say they have three over here, and you can only solve two. That's fine. Okay, one and two. That's fine. Same things with the emotional. Okay, there are three. You can only solve one and two. That's fine. Okay. Then social. Okay, you can focus. Uh, let's say you can you can uh, focus on uh, number one only. That's fine. Okay. So now your product is complete. You have addressed their pain. You have addressed their gains. Okay. You have created the gains for them. And now you are addressing the jobs needed to be done. You know that your product fits the market because there is a job needed to be done. Right. So far, are you clear or are you not clear? Okay, are you clear or are you not clear? I think this is pretty simple. Now you know it's uh, the value proposition canvas. You can just plot them in. Okay, there's no. Uh, I I think it would be hard, but shouldn't be very hard. So now you can differentiate yourself and your competitors easily, right? Now when people ask you, why should I buy from you? Okay. Right, you you need to buy from me, okay? You need to buy from me because pain relievers, okay? Apart from that, I also give you gain creators, okay? And this product or these services that I provide is so good that it can solve your products and services, okay? So now can you see 
how it relates. Can you see why value proposition or plotting a, a value proposition actually influence the buying decision? Guys, are you there? Put inside a chat box, yeah? Right? So far, are you clear? Cool, right? Cool. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I will open up the Q&A session. Okay, open up the Q&A session. Should you have any question, please do ask me. Right? This is Q&A session. Now you can ask me. We have another five minutes to go. Right, come on, guys. Do you have any questions to ask me regarding how a value proposition can influence buying decision? Okay, you can open up your mic if you want, or you can put it inside the chat box. Okay, a question from Satish. When asking for the product and services, show we ask why you, you buy a car or why you buy a BMW specific. Okay. okay, should we ask why you buy a car or why you buy a BMW specific? Okay, it's better to put it this way. A BMW is actually a brand, right? And before they, they, they create the product or they develop the product, they will need to ask their customers, okay, what are the functional job that you, that you need us to do for you? Okay, what is the functional job that you need, for, uh, you need us to do for you? Right? So that would be the question. It wouldn't be like why you buy why you buy a BMW. No. No, yeah. Okay. But before you produce a BMW, you should ask your customer what are the functional, emotional, and social job that they wanted to address. And then you start to develop the product uh, fit to the market. Okay, Satish. Clear or still unclear? Okay, cool. Right, so that is what we call as product market fit. Yeah, so the market you wanted to you wanted your product to fit into the market. So what happens to entrepreneurs to businesses is that actually the product is not needed into the uh, is not needed uh, by the market. So that that is the common problem that uh, entrepreneurs or young entrepreneurs often find lah. Okay, so it is something that people do need and they are serving. So with this value proposition, you can sure that. Uh, your product is needed or not needed into the market. If it's not needed, then you can pivot according to their needs. Yeah? Right. How about the other questions? Do we have other questions from the other participants? Any questions, guys? No more questions. We have another two minutes, yeah? Okay, maybe can we have D or anyone asking the question? No more questions, yeah? Okay, if there is no more questions, I would like to pass on uh, the floor to Mr. Chu. Right, Mr. Chu, are you there? Yeah, hi. Right. Okay, thanks, Mr. Iskandar. Uh, so, before we end, uh, I would like to uh, request you guys to scan this QR code for give us some review to help us improve in the future. Just uh, two minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Iskandar. Thank you all to join this session. Hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe, guys. Bye.